Do you have trouble listening to others' conversations? Do you have trouble hearing the information that you need so that you can answer questions? Today, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to listen correctly. Hmm, it's going to be fun. <laughs> now, our learning goals for today are to learn how to listen in a conversation and how to listen in an academic situation because they are not the same. And I'll show you why. First, listening depends on the situation. Like I just said, with the learning goals, I'm going to teach you both ways. So let's think about these questions. Where are you, right? Where are you as the listener? And who are you listening to? That is another big factor because whoever you are listening to changes the style of communication. Now, conversational listening skills take a bit more effort than academic, which sounds weird, right? Talking to your friends takes more effort to listen correctly than an academic one where a teacher is talking to you or you're in a lecture or a presentation. There's more effort needed to have a conversation with someone than to listen in an academic situation. In a conversation, the listener needs to pay attention to more than one thing. They need to listen to the tone, okay? They need to listen to the subjects, okay? They need to listen to the delivery speed, how fast someone speaks. And they need to pay attention to the speaker's body language. Mm -hmm. This should be interesting. Tone, what is it, right? Tone is something that I talk about a lot when I try to help you improve your speaking. Tone changes the meaning of a lot of what we say. Does the person you're listening to speak flat, right? They have a monotone, flat type of speaking. There's no ups and downs. It's just flat. Mm, bleh. Sounds terrible, right? Do they speak flat? Or do they have lots of inflections? Are the high tones and low tones, right? Are there lots of things going on? Or, you know, do they talk with other inflections? <laughs> it's a very colorful language, but we have to pay attention to these things. In an academic setting, the listener needs to pay attention to something different. Well, slightly different. They need to listen for the subjects. Same as a conversation, like, what are we talking about? But they need to really listen for facts and opinions. Hmm. Now, we didn't say that about the conversation stuff, because you'll see why in a little bit. Let's try... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. Let's practice and try... Blah, whatever that word I was trying to say was with listening for tone and inflections, okay? So I'm going to read this, and I'm going to read it two ways. How about that? I'll read it two ways, okay? And I'm going to change the tone and inflection at certain places. Are you ready? Think about it this way. I was driving my car home tonight. Work called, and I accidentally ran a red light. Luckily, there wasn't a cop, or I would have gotten a ticket. Okay, that's one. Now, two. I was driving my car home tonight. Work called, and I accidentally ran a red light. Luckily, there wasn't a cop, or I would have gotten a ticket. Did I read that the same way? No, right? I read that two separate ways. The tone changed. See, take a look right here. You can see two different colors here. In the one, I said, work called, right? And that was where I put the emphasis. And then the second one, well, the first one I said, luckily. That is where I put the emphasis. Let's look in this a little bit more because it's, it's important to understand how tone can change the meaning of what we hear. In the very first one, it was work, right? Work was where the inflection came in, where that tone changed, right? Work called, huh? What did that mean? What did that mean? Why did the speaker increase the sound? on work. Well, work caused the anger. It made them annoyed, right? The person who was angry that work caused, called, right? And they blame work for running that red light. See how the meaning changed? Let's think about the second one, right? The other version, where we looked at luckily, right? Luckily was the high part. 
And the second one, they were thankful for their luck, right? Luckily, I didn't get a ticket. Yeah, you know, we're called and it was annoying, da 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 da. But luckily, whoa, luckily, I didn't get a ticket. The emphasis was on the luck, the happy, the relieved feeling that they didn't get a ticket. And the first one, the emphasis was on how annoyed and angry work made it. Exact same thing, but with different inflection, and it changed the meaning completely. The two situations, the listener would respond differently. And that's the key thing here about an active conversation. It's not just you listening. You're responding. You have to be a part of the conversation. So because of this tone change, your way of replying, of responding, is going to be different. Let's look at this first one where we said work, right? The work part made us angry, right? I was driving my car home tonight, work called, and I accidentally ran a red light. Luckily, there wasn't a cop or I would have gotten a ticket. You would reply, work is so annoying. We hear the key point that they're trying to make. They're angry because we're called. We're called and I ran a red light. That means me as the listener. I have to respond to that thing. Oh, yeah. Work is annoying. Okay? Now, let's listen to the second one. I was driving my car home tonight. Work called and I accidentally ran a red light. Luckily, there wasn't a cop or I would have gotten a ticket. The emphasis is put on that luck part. And you reply, you are so lucky. Do you see how our answer changed based on the tone? The tone said this. This is what I'm talking about. This is my main subject. Hmm, that's not so bad, right? Now, in an academic situation, you are only listening for facts, right? You're only listening for a fact, an opinion, something like that, okay? So let's take a look at this again. I was driving my car home tonight. Work called and I accidentally ran a red light. Luckily, there wasn't a cop or I would have gotten a ticket. The academic listener heard these things, okay? Because they heard many things. They heard driving home, and work, so they put those together. Driving home from work. Ran a red light, right? Oh, okay, that was a key thing. There was no cop, ah, and there was no ticket. These are the pieces that an academic listener paid attention to. That's what they caught out of this, this dialogue. Why? They don't have to respond, right? You see how the academic situation, only these facts matter, right? They don't even have to think a lot. Why? There is no response. Yeah. That's why I said earlier, in a conversation, the active listener has more to do because they have to respond, okay? But in an academic situation, that sounded really fast. In an academic situation, we're just listening so we can write an answer. Mm -hmm. Subjects are also very important to listen to. You know, we're li or not listen to, listen for. Look at the thing. <laughs> but it's not the same in a conversation or in an academic setting. Okay? The same thing as before. In the very first part, tone was very important for a conversation, but it didn't matter for an academic situation. We're just listening for facts. Now, let's listen for the subjects in a conversation. Okay? We went on our family vacation last week. We went to Disney in Florida. We were only able to go to three of the four parks because they're so huge. The kids had fun, but I thought it was expensive. Okay, so when we were listening to this conversation, right, what were the things that stood out to us? What were the pieces that mattered? Family vacation last week. Oh, okay. Disney in Florida. Ooh, okay. Three of the parks because it was too big, right? It was so huge. Kids had fun. I thought it was expensive. Hmm. Now, what are the subjects if this was an academic situation, right? Well, I don't know. We can't know. Why? Because there has to be a question for the listener to identify, to hear the specific subjects. When we're doing a conversation with someone, we don't know really 
what they might talk about. As time goes, we, we get context and we can understand what about the subject it, you know, we're going to talk about. But when it starts, maybe we don't know where they're going with what they're saying. But an academic situation, I'm not listening for anything because I have no reason to listen to. I'm not responding. I have to, I have to answer a question, right? I have to answer a question and then I'm listening for the answer to that question. Academic situations, quite different, right? Let's look at the academic subjects, okay? Why did they only visit a few parks? Hey, I have a reason to listen now. I'm listening for the answer to this question. Now, I know that the answer is we were only able to go to three of the parks because they are so huge. I had a question I needed to answer. Okay, not, a, not something I had to respond to. So you can see how conversational uh, listening skills and academic listening skills are pretty different, right? They share some similarities. We use our ears <laughs> and we listen for subjects, but not much else so far. You see how there's really no point to a conversation in an academic setting? You're not replying, right? If you don't have a question in an academic situation, there's zero reason for listening. Why would you, right? Imagine you're sitting in class and the teacher is just talking, but you don't have an assignment, right? You're not doing something with what she's saying or he's saying. So what do you do in class? Your teacher's talking, right? They are talking about something but you're not listening because you don't have an assignment. You have no question. But the minute the teacher says, turn to this page and get ready to answer this question, oh, you pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Now, we said that the subject, the tone, those are important, but also the speed of delivery. That was the third thing, I believe. Now, that is very important as well for the listener, but it's not the same for academic situations as it is for a conversation. Of course not, right? <laughs> so in this part, I want you to listen for the speed changes in a conversation. Why? I think you'll be able to understand from this conversation, but just pay attention to when the speed changes. I was hiking high up in the snow-covered mountains. It was quiet and the snow was deep. As I hiked towards the summit, a crack echoed through the mountain. A low rumble started and quickly increased in sound. An avalanche. I knew I had seconds to react. I ran as fast as I could, but the snow was so deep. The cave was just in my sights as the ground. Hmm. In a conversation, the listener would know that the quicker part is the most important part, right? We're listening to you talk about your hike in the, in the mountains, right? But then suddenly you speed up and we're like, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Right? Now something's important. But in an academic situation, the listener would only listen for facts. If anything, they might get annoyed because it got so fast and now it's harder to listen. Yeah, <laughs> I would. So now, what about the fourth part? I said body language and here we are in a listening video. We're talking about listening, body language. I don't know what that was, but why not? Did that, did I have any sound? No. Hmm. So why is that an important part of active listening? Hmm. Body language is a nonverbal, no sound, right? Form of communication, but it is very important to the overall message being said. Okay, all right, all right. We're starting to see how this might match, even though we're not saying anything. It is important to the meaning. Hmm. Even though it doesn't involve your ears, it's, it's pretty important to what is important about what someone is saying. What is important about what someone is saying? <laughs> yeah, that made sense. Normally we do conversation first and then I show you how academic screws it up. But this time I'm gonna show you academic first, okay? Let's look at an academic presentation. Watch the body language of the person presenting this lesson. You see it? 
See how she is moving as she teaches math? Yeah, she's moving. She is emphasizing the words, but there is no emotion. She is just explaining a skill. Everything is equally important. You see that? We take the two, we add it to the two, it equals four. She's moving, but each thing is just a fact. It's just a thing. Nothing was more than the other. They're all equal. Hmm, okay, I'm starting to understand, right? Now, let's look at the difference between that and a presentation, you know, a style, a conversation style presentation. That's what I wanted to say. A conversation style presentation. <laughs> Okay, watch his body language, okay, because it's very different. By watching him explain his subject, we can see which parts are important. His body language helps put emphasis on key ideas and things that are important to its overall message. They show you the body language, right? It shows you when to listen. Yeah. If he's just up there speaking, and it's not, it's, not a, it's not a presentation for a school or something, you're actually in this conversation, and he's just speaking like this, well, we're kind of listening, right? But when he starts moving and getting involved in this important thing like I'm doing right now, what I'm saying is the most important part of this little piece I've been saying. That body language says, oh, this, this, right now, something important, right now. Now, our main question is, how do you listen? Well, it depends on the situation. In a conversation, pay attention to the tone, the subject, the speed of delivery, right? And the body language. Well, in an academic setting, we listen for facts, opinions, and the subjects. Not in any order. <laughs> I said that in a different order than is written, but that's okay. Now, how do you improve? That's the main thing here, right? We're here for a reason. How do I get better? Now I know what I'm supposed to be listening for in each setting. Now, how do I improve? Well, in an academic situation, you practice listening to dialogue or stories and answer the related questions. It's completely different from a conversation, right? It is a one-sided listening exercise. We listen and then we write the answer but we must have questions. That's the key. Now, in a conversational situation, right? How do we improve? Well, we join a conversation. <laughs> Practice by being in a conversation. Talk to people. If you want to get better at listening skills in a conversation, get in a conversation and listen. Listen for the four things, right? Pay attention to those four things that I showed you just a little bit ago, 20 minutes. Well, it's 20 minutes now, but <laughs> quite a bit ago, yeah. Okay, that's how you get better. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to listen. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Do you disagree? Ooh. And if you disagree, tell me why, right? I'm curious why you think your way might be right, or maybe you have something that I forgot. That would be interesting for me. I'd like to hear that. I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.